everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today we're gonna work with the teens board again, and this time we're only gonna work with the symbols. Now, if you have watched my previous video, you know that we've already introduced quantity, and now that they've worked with quantity for a little bit, we're gonna start introducing the teen symbols. And to do that, we're gonna use the teen boards. Now, normally you would set up the teen boards to stack this one, on top and this one on the bottom. But as you can see for our building purposes, I can't do that. So I have a limited space to film. So today we're gonna work with them just like this. And in fact, for the very first part of the lesson, we're only gonna need this board. So for this lesson, we're gonna need our number cards and we are gonna use just the first board for the first part. And just like introducing the quantity, we are gonna introduce these numbers with a three period lesson. So we're only gonna start with the first three numbers. And feel free to ask your student what the numbers are as they see them. So this is one, two, and three. So we're only working with the first three numbers in the first part of this lesson, so we can set those aside for the moment. Now let's look at our board and ask our student, what number do they see? What is this number? And of course they should say 10. And as always, we should ask them, how many zeros does 10 have? It has one zero. So we know that this is 10. We've looked at our number cards here and we know that this says one. So this part is very familiar to the student. Now we're gonna move on to the part that's new. If I put the one in here, just like that, this makes 11. And then we're gonna take it out and allow our student to make 11. So they can put it in again. 11. Let's do the next one. What's this number? Two. And what's this number again? 10. And how many zeros does 10 have? One zero. So we have 10 and two. If we put two in there like that, that makes 12. 12. And again, take it out and allow the student to put it in and say 12. Let's move on to the next one. What's this called? Three. And again, what's this called? 10. How many zeros? One zero. If we put the three in here just like that, we get 13. As you're saying 13, try to emphasize the word teen because that's going to be important later in the lesson. So now we have learned 11, 12, and 13. 11, 12, 13. So this is the first part of the three period lesson that we have done. We have given language for each piece of material. So that's the first part of the three period lesson. And now it's time to play those association games. We're gonna mix them up a little bit. Let's put some random numbers in here. And now let's play an association game. Can you point to the 12? Can you take out the 13? Can you put the 13 back in the slot? Can you point to 11? Can you take out the 12? Can you build 11 right here? Can you build 13 right here? Can you build 12 right here? Can you point to 11? Can you point to 13? Can you point to 12? And you can do this part of the lesson as much as you want, as many times as you want, until you feel comfortable with their ability to grasp which number goes with which word. And when that's done, you're going to do the final part of the three period lesson. So again, mix it up, put things in a random order. And the third part of the lesson is simply asking, what does this say? 13. What does this say? 11. What does this say? 12. And so at this point, if they can do that, if you're feeling confident that they can do that, then you can move on to the next three numbers. But if they are still struggling with this, I would not move on. You would simply say, you know what, that's a really great lesson for today. I think we're going to 
wait to do the rest for a different day and I'll show you how to put it away. So if you need to stop at this point and just focus on the first three numbers. But if this is easy for them, if they've got this down, we're gonna move on to the next three numbers. So we're gonna take these out and we're just gonna set them aside. Notice that when I place them down and we're working with one at a time, notice that these are down and this is up. The reason why this is important is because we wanna work in isolation with the number that we are focusing on. If we have lots of numbers up and lots of other things showing, that's a distraction, right? So when we're introducing something, we simply want to eliminate any extra distractions, any extra information that's being given in the environment and simply focus on the task at hand. So make sure to keep your unused numbers upside down and that will eliminate some of the distraction for the student. So if that was easy for them, we can move on to four, five, and six. Again, we're gonna introduce this exactly the same way. We're still using just this board, and we're gonna do the same thing we did before. What's this number? Four. And by this time, they probably know this is 10, so you don't have to keep going over what's this, how many zeros does it have. If they feel comfortable with that, you're ready to move on. You can move a little bit more quickly through the next three numbers. And you're gonna do the exact same thing, do the three period lesson. The first part is introducing the language. The second part is the association game. And then the third part is asking, what is this? Once you move through that, and if that's easy for them, move on to seven, eight, and nine. And we're gonna do it exactly the same way until all the numbers for the teens are introduced. And again, you want to emphasize the word teen. For the second part of the lesson, we are gonna use both boards. And normally, like I said, we would stack them on top of each other. Notice that the spot that's blank, that's going to be the bottom board. And that's just to show that the numbers continue on past 19. So we're going to make some space so I can work with both of them at the same time. And at this point in time, you're going to invite your student to build the numbers in any order they want. So they can simply take each number and fill it in any slot you can say you can put them wherever you want in the board. So once they filled in the board any way they want with the numbers, we're gonna ask them to read the numbers. And just a little hint, you know, when I introduce the nine and the six, I will say, you know what, the six sits down and the nine stands up. If you need something to help them tell the difference between the nine and the six, just say, look, six sits down and the nine stands up. So I just wanted to let you know that might be helpful for you if, if they're struggling with the difference between six and nine. So once they put this board in any order they want, we're gonna ask them to read the numbers that they've built. So we're gonna start here and say, what's this number? And what's this number? What does that say? And keep going until they've read all the numbers and as usual in the Montessori environment, if they've made a mistake, we're not gonna correct them. So if they say that this is 16 and it's 13, we're not gonna correct them. We're just gonna make a note that they need to work with this just a little bit more and maybe make a note of, okay, they can't tell the difference between 13 and 16. Make a note of that and do three period lessons on the numbers that they're really struggling with and maybe do some multi-sensory work with those numbers that they're really struggling with. And you can do sandpaper numbers and you can do different projects to help them get that idea of the difference between 13 and 16. So just remember that we don't correct them during the lesson. We're gonna observe, we're gonna make notes, we're gonna do more three period lessons, more association games, and multi-sensory work if they're not understanding the difference between certain numbers. So once they've read all their random numbers, we're gonna invite them to take all the numbers out. So once we've taken all the numbers out of the board, the guide is going to put the numbers in sequence. And you can even ask them, okay, this is 11, can you make 12? What comes after 12? And so you'll keep going until everything is in sequence. And as you're going along, you're gonna say 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And when you get to 17, stop and have them listen to you say 17 and ask them, can you hear the word teen 
in 17. Teen means 10. As you can see, we have a lot of tens here. So 10 and seven is 17. And then continue on to 18 and 19. Once we fill in the board, we're gonna ask our student to count the numbers starting with 11. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now let's count backwards. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So we're gonna put it in sequence. We're gonna ask them to count forward. We're gonna ask them to count backward. So that's how we finish the lesson. It's very similar to the quantity lesson. We're gonna introduce three at a time in a three period lesson until they've gotten all of the numbers. And then we're gonna allow them to put them in a random order. Then we're gonna put them in sequence. We're gonna count in order from 11 to 19. And then we're gonna count backwards, 19 to 11. Let's talk about the theory real quick. The control of error for this lesson for knowing whether or not they've done this lesson correctly, the control of error is within the child for this one. So we know that as they go along, as they develop, as they experience this work more and more, they're gonna get it. We don't need to have a separate control of error for this lesson because we have faith in the child that with enough experience, with enough practice, they're gonna understand how to count from 11 to 19. So wherever you see mistakes, we're just gonna make mental notes and keep going back to that three period lesson in multi-sensory activities and they will get it. That's an important thing to remember in Montessori, we have faith in the child that they are going to get it. Sometimes we just have to be a little bit more patient and sometimes we just have to do some extra activities along the way to help them out. And of course the direct purpose is to give the child the symbol and name for the numbers. And the age that we introduce this is gonna be around the age of four years old. So that's the theory part behind this lesson. I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that you've liked this lesson. And if you have, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.